Hello, my name is Scott Newhouse. Welcome back to Retirement Clarity Radio. I am so glad that you are here. I owe you all a big apology. I think I took a a 10-month break um, from making videos. I didn't think it would be that long, but um, I definitely didn't warn you guys ahead of time, so sorry about that. I'm glad to be back. Uh, My hope is to be doing at least two uh, podcast videos every month. So hope you stay subscribed and I'm excited that you're still here. So today I want to talk about what happens when you mix politics and investing. To give you a little bit of background, I've been a financial advisor since 2015, um, right before Donald Trump walked down that escalator to announce uh, his run for the presidency. And I have worked through um, a number of political and societal events, obviously the Trump campaign, Trump versus Hillary, um, Trump's presidency, COVID, and all of the political fights that it brought, uh, Biden's presidency, inflation being the highest it's been in 40 years, um, Ukraine-Russia war, and, and plenty of other things that I'm not mentioning. My point here is that in terms of politics and current events, a lot's happened over the last eight years that I've been a financial advisor, and I have met with countless clients, potential clients, friends who come to me uh, you know, for advice, and they have, a, a number of them have wanted to use these current events these political events as a reason to change their investment strategy. Um, And some of them actually sold everything uh, when Trump became president. Others actually sold everything when Biden became president. Um, Others have looked at the news and decided, uh, you know, like right after the Russia-Ukraine war, hey, I don't want to get invested. I don't want to stay invested because of this war. Other people um, decided because they were worried about the debt ceiling or uh, Jerome Powell, the federal chair, raising interest rates. They wanted to make wholesale changes to their investment strategy because of what other people were doing in our political society that we have. So the title of this video is about what happens when you mix politics with your investing, but it also applies to current events. So what exactly happens when you start using your political beliefs and societal beliefs with your investing strategy? Well, some academics got together and they studied 60,000 individual investors from 1991 to 2002. And so we're going to go into the study, see what they found, and then we'll give you some actionable tips uh, so that you do not make these same mistakes. And I'll try and put this up on the screen um, because I'm reading from the Wall Street Journal. Okay. And so the study analyzed extensive survey data gathered by Gallup in in trading histories of more than 60,000 individual investors at a major brokerage firm. The researchers... Um, I'm not going to name all of their names, controlled for all the major demographic factors such as age, race, gender, education, wealth, and income level. The findings. After the 92 and 96 elections, when the Democrat candidate won the presidency, Democrat voters tended to have greater confidence about the future of the economy than Republican voters. That confidence from Democrats translated them into one- being more willing to incur more portfolio risk, i.e. put more in stocks and less in bonds. Two, it it made them favor domestic stocks, U.S. stocks, over foreign international companies. And then three, and this is a big one, these Democrats traded less frequently because their candidate won. At the same time, in 92 and 96, Republicans were less confident about the economy And therefore, they tended to do the reverse of what the Democrat voters did. In other words, they they were more likely to sell their stock position and go into bonds or cash. They favored international companies more, and they traded more frequently. Now, a brief interruption here. Uh, Over the last 100 years, stocks have outperformed bonds. Domestic stocks have outperformed international stocks. And people who have traded less frequently have better investment returns than people who trade more frequently. So if your party wins, you essentially act in accordance with better uh, investment principles, better investment behavioral finance principles. But before you start all saying, oh, look at all those idiot Republicans who uh, 
acted terribly after 92 and 96 elections. I need to tell you, um, if you're thinking that, after the 2000 election where the Republican candidate won the presidency, the exact same pattern emerged just with the parties switched. So Republican voters bought more stock, they traded less frequently, and they tilted their portfolios more towards domestic stocks than international stocks. And the Democrat voters did the exact opposite. So over this 12-year study, the results show that if your party wins the presidential election, you will become a better investor. And if the party you do not like wins, you will become a worse investor. And also, I think that I think this is really interesting. This was not just true for individual investors. Um, it was also professional money managers who were influenced by their politics. These researchers also found in the months leading up to the 2000 election, Democratic money managers invested more heavily in stocks that would supposedly benefit Mr. Gore if he won. Yet, on the other hand, Republican money managers invested in stocks that would presumably do better if George W. Bush won the presidency. In other words, even these professional money managers let their partisan fervor guide their investment decisions. So what is the net result of all of this? I've talked about you know the behaviors that people make, but what's the net result in terms of your investment account and the returns that you get? For individual investors, folks like you and me, when our favored political party is in power, we get 2.7% better returns per year than if the party we did not like is in power. And what's important to note here is that this is not some kind of sophisticated investment strategy that you need to employ. Um, this is basic. Um, not, it's it's simple, but it's complicated because it's it's hard to do. Um, but it's it's rather basic in the sense that we just need to control ourselves, make better um, emotional decisions with our money, and not bring f politics into our investing strategy, and then we're going to get better returns. So investors are continually shooting themselves in the foot because when some politician they do not like gets elected, they adopt poor behaviors and they hurt their returns by that same 2.7%. And again, it's the same funds, it's the same investment strategy, but the individual investor is shooting themselves in the foot and making things worse. So what does that mean over eight years, which is two terms for a president? If you had 100,000 in your account and you get 8% returns for eight years, you will have 185,000 or so at the end of those eight years. But if you shoot yourself in the foot, you make investing decisions based on your politics or the current event you would only get a 5.3% rate of return, which at the end of eight years would be $151,000. So that's 18% less in your account just because you did not like the political party in power and then you changed your investment decisions because of that. So please, folks, do not use your politics or current events to change your investing strategy. Um, yes, I get our politicians are frustrating, but over the last hundred years, our stock market has done very well under both Democrats and Republicans. We've seen the stock market weather um, a number of current uh, economic storms, a number of societal events that we've had to go through, the Great Depression, world wars, multiple crises in the Middle East, worldwide pandemics, and so much more. So my best, my very best investment advice I can ever give you is to put together a solid investing strategy of low-cost, well-diversified funds with the appropriate asset location, and then go spend your time doing something far more enjoyable than worrying about politicians messing up your investment strategy. All right, that's all I've got for today. I'll have a new video coming out soon. I'm glad to be back. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.